Welcome to this uh, shortwave radio channel. And um, a few of you have been asking me about the SDR Play RSPDX, so that you see here. This is my RSP18, the one I was using before. It's right now unplugged. But uh, I can already go straight to a lot of the questions that people have been asking me. So if you have an RSP1A, for example, uh, there are some people out there saying, that, well, you know, should I invest in the RSPDX and so on? Uh, it depends what you do, honestly, okay? Uh, because in terms of performance, at least for shortwave side of things, it, they are pretty much equal. And the same, actually, I was talking about flaws on the RSP1A that I did find that depending on how the low frequency is set, Sometimes you actually might have uh, spurious signals uh, that appear, especially in the low bands. Well, I noticed that the RSPDX suffers from the same problems, but it's it's not a big problem because it's um, easily rectifiable. You simply change the low frequency, the local oscillator frequency, and then retune, and you'll see that they're gone. So it's not really a, an issue. Um, it's It's just... You know, a small annoyance that you can actually easily fix. For performance on shortwave, they seem to be very similar. So if your main interest is mostly shortwave radio, um, the first answer that I would give to anybody that has an RSP1A is, I don't think you need to move to an RSPDX. Your RSP1A is probably sufficient. And for those that are looking for a first-time SDR, um, you know, the uh, RSP1A is inexpensive and very, very nice. And uh, if there's, you know, if, if the price is important for you, just go to the RSP1A and you're going to have an amazing uh, software defined receiver. I still think that for entry level SDR, the RSP1A is still almost impossible to beat on the market when you look at other SDRs priced in that range. These are amazing. And uh, they beat the uh, the dongles, they beat this RTL SDR by a big margin. I mean, this isn't just a small upgrade, it's really a huge upgrade. Where you might want to move to an RSPDX or you might want to buy the RSPDX, several antenna inputs that are switchable in software. So you see here, I've got two antennas right now plugged in. I've got the SMA30 on one, I've got the W6LVP on the other. And that is really, truly fun because you can just, in the software, click antenna B, antenna A, antenna C. Uh, antenna C is made for two megahertz and below to kind of use that improved performance in the low bands. That also is a reason why you might want to move to an RSPDX have the possibility to actually have enhanced medium wave long wave and i can't test that much i can test the medium wave and we'll try that out but as for the long wave it's kind of hard here but almost everybody that talked about the rspdx they received uh they say that it's a killer performance below two megahertz it is a much improved performance below two megahertz so if you're a long wave medium wave dxer then the RSPDX is a must to have. So these are a few of the little things that I would actually say. It's they, they did redesign the device, so they redesigned the front end and all of that. So there are surely some improvements also in other uh, spheres of how it works. I'm very, very happy with both. I'm very happy with the RSPDX. It's an amazing device. Um, and of course, this is not a full review, by the way. The full review is coming up as I want taking notes and, and, and creating a, a full and interesting review that will talk about it. And don't forget, these are wideband devices, wideband receivers. They go from one kilohertz all the way up to two gigahertz. So you can listen in to even VHF, UHF signals with these, which is a, a nice add-on also to all of this. And finally, to um, answer some of the questions, the RSP1A is in a plastic box. Although, from what I've read, it is apparently painted uh, by in the inside with a metal uh, paint to kind of give it some shielding. But the RSPDX actually comes in a metal box. 
So it's heavier because it's really a metal box, not a plastic box like the, uh, the, uh, the RSP1A. Actually, it gives it a more uh, official and a more quality feel that, that, than the RSP1A. But whatever you get, they are amazing devices to purchase. So um, performance is great. I've been really, really enjoying using the RSPDX. Uh, and of course, my review will be coming up. And I would say and it may be later this week or at the beginning of next week as I use it a little more and uh, put it to the test also on the VHF UHF range. If you enjoy my videos, please subscribe, give us thumbs up. Thanks for watching.